Thanks for letting me lead you through this lesson on Grandma Moses. There are numerous other art projects out there that you could do that would go more in depth in studying her. I have catered this lesson to really work within our fine arts portion of community day or just a simple day at home. So enjoy. Hey friends, I'm Allie. Thanks for joining us for this week with Grandma Moses. Here we have the great artist card and we have a picture of her here. And here's a detail of her painting called Early Snow. A detail means that this painting is much larger, but they just zoomed in to show you a small portion of it. She was born in upstate New York. There's some great information on the back of the artist card. I'm just gonna highlight a little bit of it. She didn't start painting until her 70s. So she was already a grandmother by then. So she just kind of taught herself how to paint. And by the time that she started painting with her being a grandma, it was just like, oh, that's Grandma Moses' painting. So she was originally born as Anna Mary Robertson. She married Mr. Moses and known as Grandma Moses. And she always signed Moses in her paintings somewhere. Her paintings sat in a drugstore for over a year and then a collector from New York in 1938, went in, saw them, bought them all up, and started promoting her. Her works have appeared on the covers of Time and Life magazines, on stationery and prints, and that was very popular during her time. The nation was kind of disillusioned with World War II and the Cold War, and her style just kind of resonated with the Americans. So here we have three of her works. The names are The Old Oaken Bucket, The Old Oaken Bucket, The Last, and The Old Oaken Bucket. I couldn't find a date for this one, but you can see these two are depicted in winter, and this one is in the summer. So here's just an example of an artist just practicing over and over again the same scene, and there's slight variations each time. Notice also the size of these, 36 inches by 48 inches. So this is quite large. So she's got a lot of detail on here, but she's working on a really big canvas. Today, we're just gonna focus on one structure and work on that. We're gonna try to fit this in in our 20 minute community time. If you've got extra time and you're doing this at home, then add some more detail add some people, add some animals. Now, one thing you'll note is when you look at these, the old oaken buckets, there's no buckets in the artworks. But it's said that this is a well right here. And so there's a story, I believe that they said there was a song that talks about this oak bucket that's here in the well. So we're just assuming it's down there in the well somewhere, I guess. You can grab, oh, I'll have a link of this, and so you can have these as, print these out as samples. So, let's look at our materials for today. For our materials, we're going to be using white cardstock, a pen, we're going to be using some watercolor, only with the greens, and I've got some round brushes here, some water, now you can improvise with any of these materials. This is just what I'm using. So they're simple, but we do have several material mediums today. A red crayon, a gray crayon, and I have a blue one. I also have some blue chalk here for this guy. It can be sidewalk chalk. It can be chalk you use on a chalkboard. It can be artist chalk. It doesn't have to be um, this exact one. And then for our snow, we're gonna use some white paint and I'm going to use Q-tips to have, apply this. All right, so let's get started. So here's our painting that we're going to do for level one. So we'll get that cardstock, we'll get this pen. Using these fingers is like a ruler. Let's see if we can get both of these in here. Here we go. So we're gonna put like four fingers 
And if you'd like to have someone put a dot on there for you and a dot on the other side so you can connect them, then do that. But these are some rolling hills, so doesn't have to be straight. Don't make it straight because hers weren't straight. Look, she was in upstate New York drawing, painting these. Okay, next we're going to do our building down here. So. We're gonna use about four fingers. We're gonna come up and we're going to, um, so four fingers. Let's just draw a straight line about that big. And we're gonna make it into a square. It does not have to be perfectly straight. On top of our square, we're going to make a triangle. Now we're going to make a large rectangle off to the side. And it's just a straight line. We're not angling it back. If you look at hers, it's just straight across. She was a self-taught artist, so she's not necessarily showing like how that building probably actually, you know, giving us a perception that it's going off into the distance. So just keeping it nice and simple now we've got this line here and we're going to draw the same line up here at the top but we're not going to make it go all the way to the end so about that long i'm going to stop and then again connect these two down here now we've got to keep these animals and people warm so we're going to do a small rectangle up on top and if you want to put some bricks in there you can so i did two lines do horizontal, then we're going to do some vertical, do a little brick pattern. Now we need a way to get in here and we need some windows. So let's draw a large, almost like a square right here. Then we're going to half it. If you just want to put two door knobs or handles like that, you can. If you want to stick some windows in there too, you can. You can kind of be the architect for this barn. All right, now we're gonna do three more windows down the side here. So we're gonna do rectangle. And then we're gonna do a small letter T from top to bottom, left to right, to make the window panes in our windows. Mine are not exactly the same, all right? And hers aren't either. Now we're going to do these three little trees over here and they're just three little marks like this. Right now they don't look like anything. But we're gonna put some green paint on top of them to make them look like trees. And then we're gonna do one, if you have room, behind or to the right of your house here. Just like that, just some little scratchy marks right there. And we're gonna make that into a beautiful evergreen tree. And then if you don't have much time, then skip this next part where I'm gonna draw the fence and you can get on to the sky part, all right? But if you've got time, then let's draw a little fence. She's got fences and hearts. We're gonna do three straight lines across You try to do this. They don't have to be perfect. Mine aren't perfect. Look, mine are closer together here, wider apart here. Then we're gonna use our fingers to measure for how we're gonna put our post. So first let's put a post here to anchor it down. I don't know, was that maybe three or four different swipes back and forth because we want a strong post to hold our wires or boards up. Then I'm gonna put two fingers down and do another post and just keep going all the way across. Okay, you wanna make sure that they go through the top and through the bottom. Now, while we have our pen, let's go ahead. Um, let's make the roof look a little bit thicker. What this is doing is actually giving like a shadow to show that it kind of hangs over. And down here on the bottom, okay? 
and let's write our name because we're going to put the pen up and move on to some other mediums. So you can hide your name in the fence down here. If you want to put what year you're doing it, you can do that. All right, next we're going to use our red crayon and we're going to color our chimney. Next, blue. She had blue windows in her winter scenes. And then we're going to do gray for the barn. I'm gonna do some gray lines. I'm gonna press down really hard to make it look like it's the clapboards which is the siding, which is just boards that they lay horizontally across when I go through or in between my windows, like so. All right, and then you can kind of color on top of that. It's okay if there's some white showing. Maybe it's some snow that's gone up on the side of it. Oh, we can also do these little windows right here too. You could do those blue. If you put windows in there, and then color maybe some dark gray doors. Now it's time to do the blue chalk, whether it's sidewalk chalk or whatever you have. All right, we're just gonna do kind of a messy chalk rub. Then you're going to get a napkin, some tissue, paper towel. We're gonna kind of rub that around. Okay, then you kind of tap that off. And there's our blue sky. Next, we're gonna take an eraser. Mine actually fell off, so I'm just using the tiny tip of it. It's much easier to use when it's on there, but I'm just gonna go with this. And we're going to erase some of the chalk to make it look like clouds. I love this moody, loose winter sky. And you may need to clean your eraser off before you use it. Sometimes rubbing it on the carpet's good, or like if you're wearing jeans, just to give a nice clean erase. All right, so now we've got some snow clouds. All right, now we're going to do the green hills. Okay. So you've got your paints. We're gonna use the green. Maybe you've got one green or two greens. I bet if you've got one green, then you probably have a black or a brown because this is, these are your basic colors right here. You can just get your regular old Crayola, Prang, whatever watercolors you have. So a lot of times when you open it up, you've got this other plastic side and you can use that as like your well, or you could use a plate, a piece of um, a little plastic dish or something to kind of mix paints in if you want. So I can touch my greens, and then I'm gonna rinse my brush out, and I can get some brown right here, and mix it in, and I'm making a darker green. Get another dab of green. I have to clean my brush before I went back to that green. Okay. Now, if I have too much paint, then it's just gonna run all over my paper. So that's why I have my paper towel. If I need to dab it off. So we're now gonna do some green rolling hills in the background. And I'm gonna try to stay above this line. I'm gonna come back and dab some more. Remember, if it's if you've got too much water and it's like dripping off your brush, then just come and dab it on your napkin, okay? Dab, dab, dab. And it's great. 
great if your hills are a different color of greens. If you've got a little bit more brown in one, green in another, that's good. Because all trees are not, they've got different shades of color in them, right? Okay, now here's the fun where the magic's gonna happen. So I'm going to make sure I don't have too much water on my brush. I'm gonna get some paint and I wanna make sure this is a rounded brush that's kind of got a nice flat point, or not a flat point, it comes to a point. I'm not using a flat brush, I'm using a round one. See the difference? This is a number 10, but whatever size you have will be great. I'm gonna use a light hand. Still have some erase marks right there, or eraser. And I'm just going to dab on the horizon like this. And then I've got these sweet little evergreen trees popping up. Look at that. So go all the way across. practice this like on a little scrap sheet of paper before you do it. Now I'm going to go back and if this is all you have time for, then just get one row in there. If you've got some more time, then you can come back and maybe pick up a, a lighter or a darker shade and then just kind of start popping them around on the hill in between there. If you still see that those are wet, then don't touch them because you don't it's okay if they smear together, you just don't want to get them disappear. Sometimes a brush will separate and give you some different shapes, it's okay. If you need to put more water, see those are darker, so I'm going to mix some of those in there. I'm not pressing down really heavy. If I press down hard, then my trees are probably be really big. I'm just going to these tiny ones way off in the background. So there we've got our rolling hills. We've got these three right here. So I'm gonna come with my brush. I can press down heavier here. See, I'm pressing down more. And there's my little evergreen. Or another way you can do it is kind of brush to the left, brush to the right, and paint a um, triangle. If you get too much water on here too, then it's also going to be hard for your paper. It might start wrinkling up. So I'm just using white cardstock. All right, and we've got one more. So we've got our background, our middle ground, and here's our foreground because it's close to us. Okay. It's okay for it goes over my house because sometimes you can look at a house and you can see like through the branches and stuff. getting a lot of water on this one. I am picking up my color. You can kind of go over here and dab on a dry spot of the towel and it gives you smaller little lines with the brush strokes. It's almost called like a dry brush where you're getting the water off. Like I'm getting color, getting the water off. All right, now we're ready for our white paint. All right, I like to use um, Q-tips because we can just throw them away afterwards. Because I'm using, um, I know you could use tempera paint or acrylic, but it just makes for easy cleanup. So it's on a plate. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put white all over um, our paper here to 
can add show snow. If you don't have time, like if you're in um, doing this in your community day, then just come over here, let's put it on the roof. And I like to put it nice and thick, like it's just, it's been snowing so long and it's just sitting on the roof. A little bit sitting on the chimney there, hanging down this roof on the other side. We can put a little bit of snow out in front of it. Okay, same thing with what we did with like a, the dry brush with a watercolor. Get some of the paint off of this Q-tip. Okay, so it doesn't have too much. And then you can just come, now I need a little bit more. And you can put some little whispers of white paint on your tree. And you can do the same thing back here, you can dab, you can brush it like that. So here's one way to do the white paint. If you've got time and you want to, you can do it all over just working around the trees, but they both communicate a beautiful winter snowy day. So thanks for joining for Grandma Moses. Mm -hmm.